<laughs> look at me funny. Why? <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm concentrating. Yeah. I'm concentrating because, like, because we've hung out and chatted for years, and yeah. I've never asked like, what, why, 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 why am I doing it? Um, yeah, why? It's just for cool, cool work, I think. Yeah. You know, the perception of a of a big whale or like a marine mammal, like how they perceive their world. You know, especially the acoustic world. Once you realize how important the sound is, then you also realize how easily it is for noise, a man-made noise to impact the animals. So I, I am very much uh, sort of interested and driven by understanding that issue and trying to research it. There's a lot of policy makers and people that want to make changes, but then they also many times don't really have the scientific information or the knowledge or they don't know exactly what uh, what is what works, what doesn't. So I don't know, it feels like it's a relevant thing to work on, you know? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It's not just that sound is different than vision. You can think about a blind person and, and see how much more important sound becomes. But then they still live, you know, above water where sound travels less far. And so what we hear is quite different from what you can hear underwater when you are a marine mammal in particular. So we don't hear very well underwater because we have, uh, you know, we have the ear canal with the uh, with air and sound just doesn't propagate very well into our hearing organs but for marine mammals that works much better and then suddenly they can make really good use of the fact that that sound travels so much further and it doesn't get absorbed as well as quickly so that's why you could get you know this really low frequency sound that can travel, you know, tens, even hundreds of kilometers. Just a single sound could go really across across the world, actually. They did experiments where they would like play a sound in the Southern Ocean and it would be heard everywhere. In every ocean basin, they could pick it up. So in the right conditions, because it can essentially be like almost endless. Basically, bottlenose whales rely on sound to do everything, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so they are extreme deep divers. They dive um, to, you know, easily, quite easily to one kilometer. There, obviously, there's no light penetrating the water anymore, so it's, it's just pitch dark, so you really sound is the, the most efficient way to to scan the environment for, for prey so therefore they're they're highly you know focused on sound they use echolocation to find their prey and once they are they found the prey they use the echolocation to chase and catch it um, and, and also they use the sound to you know stay in touch with other animals 
they just listen probably just to know where they are, where the bottom is, where the surface is. Um, they can probably hear, you know, coastlines, surf from coastlines. And yeah, clearly sound is very important. So if there's some continuous, you know, other sound masking uh, the ambient noise, then, you know, maybe they don't know anymore very well where that, you know, where Ireland is. these sonar dose escalation experiments where we start at a very low level and we slowly increase the, the sound level of the sonar. So usually it starts low enough that they, they cannot hear it or they can barely hear it, but because you slowly increase the sound level you start to see some responses. But the sound is always played every 20 seconds. So there's one sonar ping, we call it like a sonar pulse, it goes to like whoop. And then there's a lot of echo, and that dies down slowly, and then 20 seconds later there's a new one. And we started to see that the pilot whales, who were sort of thought to be you know, one of the less responsive animals, because they don't show like an avoidance response. But what we started to see, just when the ship was really quite close, and so the sound levels were very high, is that some of the animals started to surface exactly at the point when the sound was was played. And of course that can happen just by chance. And it can also happen by chance, you know, two in a row, because you know they make you know kind of short dives sometimes. But then we saw this like four times in a row or three times in a row. And because we had also quite a lot of tags on pilot whales you know, over the years, you can do some statistical tests to see if this was due to chance or not. And it was very clear that they were really timing their surfacings to avoid the sound level of the sonar. But it, and it would only recur when the sound level was very high. Protocol sound avoidance behavior, essentially. Quite sad. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, I had said that. Trying to get the head out of the water to get away from the noise. Yeah. <laughs> so in, like, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, it's amazing. It's surprising that they they are able to do that. And you know, it's good that they can do it. I guess. Um, it's better than um, just being exposed to those high levels. But it is. Uh, Ja, dat gaat ze leuk vinden.